Crossroads Media. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day which angle you're taking here because all we are as a city, as a community, as a diehard 76er fan base, all we're doing is putting all of our emotions in one certain direction because we're so upset and devastated with the circumstances that we were dealt with this season, which in reality, whether you want to admit it or not, the answer is there's 9,000 issues with this team that all come together to make this the product consistently which is losing to a team that's a disaster and don't even have their proper players due to COVID protocols. So what I mean by this is Joel Embiid at times not playing his best. Tobias Harris has been insanely underperforming. He went three of 17 from the field today, five personal fouls. He was atrocious. He was devastating. It is insanely crushing this team that this is the outcome you are getting when he touches the floor. And I think right now, the pressure is getting to him because he knows there's a lot of drama tied to his name. He knows that he's not living up to the expectations. Not that we demand something unbelievable and electric and something that he's not, but what you provided last year was a nice little how do you do and if you showed over a long period of time last year that that was something you're capable of doing, you can't regress to this level. You need to find a way to get back to that version of Tobias and I think that there's a ton of pressure knowing, one, the city is all on him like I'm not downplaying getting COVID and athletes going through that especially when we know the symptoms were heavy for Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris and they were truly feeling it but after you lose to the piss poor Miami Heat who had no players available the last thing I want to do is hear Tobias Harris say we don't care about them as people we don't care about them or we don't think about what they're going through yes we do oh trust me yes we do so what you're trying to do is well you're right there is legitimacy to returning when you are feeling those type of symptoms and whatnot and the long-term effects of how it might affect your respiratory and things of that nature what you're doing is you're deflecting or you know you you're, you're trying to bounce off the issues and put it into another area you're trying to deflect it you should say, this is not okay. This is unacceptable. This can't happen. This is demoralizing. And as a locker room, we need to pick it the hell up because this is not the brand of Sixers basketball that we look at and say, yes, this is us. No, we are better than this. We will be better than this. You got to come out with the right message instead of after a loss, people don't care about us. What? What type of message is that? That's telling me what that is. When I study that answer, it's telling me that there's something going on on psychologically with the approach to Tobias Harris and I think that it's getting to him that he knows he's overpaid the fan base is letting him know and he's starting to become a target because he's not holding his end of the bargain nobody's expecting him to be LeBron nobody's expecting him to be Joel but we're expecting what we saw last year which is a good version of Tobias Harris so going back to my main point here is there's so many issues. Doc Rivers, not up to his standards. This team is consistently getting waxed with the zone. Now, I think a product of that is not having a ton of great players, and you could beat a zone in the NBA with shooters, but the problem is the way that this roster is constructed, you don't have a ton of those that you can rely on. And I put up a clip on the Broads Media Twitter account during this game, and it was Matisse Thibel wide open in the corner. Good ball movement. The ball swung from top of the perimeter to more of the elbow right over to Matisse Thibel. Bing, bang, bang. Takes a three. And during the away broadcast, all you hear is this. The Nets will live with that one as Matisse Thibel misses. Now, I thought that fourth quarter spurt out of your bench players and your role players was magnificent. And I didn't see it coming. And he did make a big shot there. And he made a shot after that miss. His next three-point attempt, he did cash in. But big picture-wise, this isn't a game-by-game -game thing or, hey, let's just study today's game and talk about it from that perspective. We know Matisse is a struggling three-point shooter, and every single year he's been here, his numbers have been going in the wrong direction, which is not something that satisfies me. It's something I will extremely point out when it comes to the flaws of him and the flaws of this three-point shooting team as well. Tobias Harris not holding up his end. Seth Curry does. I mean, that three-point, uh, not the three-point, the third quarter, 
I'm looking for that word or those two words. The third quarter, explosive out of Joel and Seth Curry. And you were looking for others to step up throughout the entire game. <laughs> 